the dominant mainstream media reaction to lab leak in 2020, that these were fringe opinions, and it was very difficult to get published with these unpopular opinions, just like it's very difficult to get published if you've got a contrary perspective on global warming. And here we've got a paleo virologist uh, responding to the hysteric Philip Marcolin. Your own fanatical position is anti-science. What seems to upset you is the heresy of questioning consensus. If it was the 19th, 15th century, you'd be pushing for Copernicus to be burnt at the stake. It's rich of Stuart Neal to complain about harassment and disrespecting the values of science, given his own behavior towards scientists who disagree with him, such as Lena Chan. Stuart Neal says that Lena Chan is operating at an Alex Jones info levels kind of uh, quality, which is pretty nasty. So how to silence. So here we've got a letter by a bunch of established scientists. Dear colleagues, we are writing you a deep concern concerning the actions of two Rutgers University faculty members. We believe their conduct requires immediate and serious review. They have repeatedly engaged in public behavior that disrespects the value of the scientific enterprise and poses a direct threat to the well-being and safety of us and our colleagues in the scientific community. So criticism and not following their protocols and not bowing down to their expertise places them at risk. Their activities on social media platforms, including Twitter, where they publicly harass, intimidate, and threaten us and other scientists are alarming. On a daily basis, they call us fraudsters, liars, perjurers, felons, grifters, stooges, imbeciles, murderers, and worse. Use us of various levels of bribery and criminal conduct. As part of our peer-reviewed academic research, these accusations are not only provably false, they're also defamatory. Well, why didn't you sue them if it's clearly defamatory? They've made repeated comparison of working scientists to historic war criminals. Right. That does sound really nasty behavior. Oh, but he's a professor of genetics, so I would suspect he knows something. Retract proximal origins. I am a witness to the abuse that Alina Chan and Jesse Bloom have suffered at the hands of a conflicted group of virology loyalists active on X. Their haughty and hyper-defensive behavior smears and slurs scientists. Right, Chris Kamatsu, analytical and diagnostic chemist, so not a virologist. It's amazing how Twitter grifter Alina Chan has gotten all of COVID contrarian Twitter to get excited again over something we knew since 2021. This was a rejected grant proposal. It was never funded. This is hysterical. Well, it was a very dangerous grant proposal. So just because the grant proposal was rejected doesn't mean it's not worthy of consideration. Chris Cavanaugh from Decoding the Gurus says, as ever, the scientific literature remains unchanged, but the media discourse is about to get another injection courtesy of the New York Times and Alina Chan, a forbidden topic that is endlessly promoted in major media outlets. They call Alina Chan a conspiracy theory theorist now. So had to make up my <laughs> mind. Let's cut the chase here. Do you believe it was a lab leak or not? No, I, I, I neither believe nor disbelieve. When Nicholas Wade released that that essay, yep. I went into it in depth. I, I thought it was incredibly compelling and incredibly important, but I just simply lack enough expertise. I don't have the galaxy brain that you have. <laughs> <laughs> so, so isn't, aren't, there, aren't, aren't there times when just simple common sense should win, just win the day easily without any fuss? And if you have an institute of virology, in the middle of a city and this strange virus appears in the exact same city where there's an institute of virology that is most likely escaped you know isn't this a time when common sense is just the correct thing to, to, to follow maybe but at the same time there was a big wet market uh nearby and a lot of you know bad you know viruses have emerged out of things like wet markets in fact every major mm -hmm pandemic and you know devastating virus that we've had for the past hundred years most likely has come from china and very likely come from things like uh, wet markets so that's why i'm kind of undecided it turns out that we didn't escape from a lab isn't it a bit unfair just to say people that believe that it did are conspiracy theorists when there's just such an there's just such a plausible who done it right before your eyes Yes. Yet the burden of proof really belongs to the people that say that it isn't or hasn't escaped from the lab. Well, I wouldn't say that the burden of proof primarily falls on either, but I would say that dismissing people making the case for lab leak and the kind of ad hominem attacks and calling them uh, 
grifters and conspiracy theorists. I, I don't agree with that. Okay, fair enough. But then, all right, so part two. Follow the money. Isn't that the ancient principle of journalism? You yes. Know, you, and it always seems as though those with the most to lose, and I mean financially, forget about prestige and all those other things, mm-hmm. just plain old dollars and cents, those, are gonna, those with the most to lose have the most invested interest in promoting the thesis that continues their funding, right? Yes. And isn't it clear that they can always use their expertise as a shibboleth to hide behind the fact that they're just simply trying to keep that income coming so they don't have to live in a neighborhood filled with super predators. Yes. Every group wants to protect its expertise and be effective and, and circle the, the wagons. And there are all sorts of professional reasons why virologists would have contempt for the lab leak hypothesis. Like, it would be really cool. bad for them. Like, it would be if you were a virologist and it came out that the pandemic came from a lab leak, I mean, your status would, would plunge. Like, some people would be spat on.